Hey guys, happy Thursday. Let's dive in. We are in Acts chapter 11, so get out the word, get out your uh, drink of choice. I'm going with a little Americano, cut with a little cream this morning, and let's pray and dive in. God, thank you for this week, and thank you for an opportunity again to start our morning opening up your scripture. Some of us uh, will be ending our day opening up your scripture either way. God, we thank you for an opportunity to connect with you through your word to us. And we ask that you would speak now, that you would open our eyes to understand, and um, that you would open up our hearts and, uh, and challenge us to, to not just understand the word, but to live it out. And God, we ask for your help now, and we pray this, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Verse 1, the apostles and the brothers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of an uncircumcised man and ate with him? Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying. <clears throat> as, da, 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 where am I at? There it is. Okay. I was in the city of Joppa praying. Uh, and <laughs> I was in the city of... Let's try verse 5 over again. These are the outtakes. Uh, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance, there we go, I saw a vision, saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and the birds of the air, and then heard a loud voice telling me, Get up, Peter, and kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time, Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all uh, pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent from uh, sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was standing. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us that he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them, and he had come as he had come on us at the beginning. Um, then I remembered what the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he has given us, uh, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, God has granted even Gentiles repentance unto life. Um, let me hit pause. So this is significant. What's happened in chapter 10, as I talked about yesterday, was huge. There's a major shift happening where now the Gentile believers uh, or Gentiles are now able to come to faith. And this is, I know to us, this is no big deal. Uh, but to the early church, this was, this was an earth shattering. And what's interesting is that now we have a whole chapter and a half devoted to what happened in Caesarea, which when we understand the scope of the 28 chapters, we're now seeing that, wow, this is a significant thing for, for the writer to give a chapter and a half to this event. So as we're reading this, we need to be seeing what's going on. A chapter and a half given to this incident, this is a big deal. So this um, another thing is there's kind of three events we see. Um, where uh, Philip went to the Samaritans. Um, that was a big deal, right? Um, but then the second uh, event is when the um, Gentiles, uh, being um, the, the guy from Caesarea, reached out to the Jews, all right? That was last chapter. And then we're about to make this kind of final little movement here in, in verse 19, where we are going to see the first time where people um, explicitly go towards the Gentiles. The reason that's different than the Samaritans is because the Samaritans were half Jewish, okay? So you've got the first kind of act going on, where, right, where uh, Philip moves to the Samaritans. Second act where, oh my gosh, this is for the Gentiles. But really, in Caesarea, the, the, um, the centurion, he reached out to, um, to Peter, okay? But now we're about to see a whole new thing happen in chapter 9, in verse 19, where, um, where believers now are going specifically to Gentiles. All right, verse 19. <clears throat> now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to the Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch. 
and began to speak to Greeks also. So that's that shift I'm talking about, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. Let me hit pause. What is fascinating here is we have no idea who these guys are. Heroes of the faith. Heroes within the, the history of the church and they're nameless. And I love this. As I was just reading this the first time through, just thinking, wow, what would our lives look like if we did not care who got the credit? Like, what could God do in us and through us if we died to this whole becoming um, someone that people knew? Embracing obscurity. And this is what we see happen right here. I mean, these guys, we have no idea who they are yet. These are the first people in the history of the church that we can see that specifically and intentionally went to the Gentiles. They went right to the Greeks. Love this. Verse 21, the Lord's hand was with them and a great number of the people believed and turned to the Lord. Verse 22, news of what happened was in Antioch. So news of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged with um, encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them named Agabus stood up and through the Spirit predicted a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, each according to his own ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Okay, um, let me just give you some, some things going on in, in uh, contextually. This is really important. As we're becoming students of the Word, Context is key. Write that down. Context is key. What do, I, what do I mean by that? We have to understand what is going on in these cities. And the more we can understand what's going on in these cities, the more the Word of God just explodes in our mind and we can understand in greater ways of the movement of the church here in Acts. Significant things that are happening contextually are this. Antioch, it's really good to know, Antioch was the third leading city in the entire Roman Empire. This was a, this was Chicago, if you will, comparing that to the United States. Um, this is what Antioch was. It was a coastal city, and it was, um, so just think that, okay, very, very influential, third most influential city in the Roman Empire. Second thing that's good to know about this is it's 300 miles from Jerusalem. The reason that's good to know is, remember, if we go all the way back to Acts chapter 1, we remember hearing the vision in the calling Jesus gave to his disciples that I'm going to fill you with power and you're going to take the gospel to the world, right? To Starting in Jerusalem, then Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And the reason that's significant is we can see throughout Acts how this is beginning to happen. Um, it started in Jerusalem. Then yesterday we, we, we talked about how 65 miles from Jerusalem then was Caesarea. So we see this thing starting to happen. Now, 300 miles from Jerusalem, is a city called Antioch. So we see that it's spreading. I did a little Google search real quick. That's uh, 300 miles from us is, is Louisville, Kentucky. So you can kind of picture in your mind how the gospel is moving out, how the gospel is really, really moving in, in huge ways. And what Jesus said to his guys back in Acts 1 is really happening. The third thing that's important uh, and maybe most important when it comes to the context of what's going on here and why this is so significant is um, there, there's something that, um, there, there's a commentary that I read. Let me just kind of give a little shout out here. William Barclay, highly recommend you read that commentary as you're studying. And one of the things I was reading there this morning that I didn't know um, was understanding just how um, uh, wicked, in essence, um, the city of Antioch was. Um, it's like... Vegas times five, okay? And so uh, thinking about Antioch, we have to understand how far from God the people of Antioch really were. There was something called the morales of Daphne, and this was known really throughout the entire Roman world, the morales of Daphne. Daphne was the goddess that they worshipped, and there was a huge temple just outside of the city limits um, for this goddess Daphne. 
And the morales of Daphne, um, the reason that was known of all throughout the Roman Empire, is what would happen was that there would be temple prostitutes, and people would come from wherever, and, you know, um, not to go into great detail there, but you can figure out what would happen um, within these kind of groves uh, just outside of the city. And the reason that's significant is understanding how lost and how far from from God the city was, yet we see God uh, begin to move in power in this city in huge ways. We see the gospel begin to flourish in a city that is far from God. And the reason that's significant is because you and I today, we know of a city or we know of friends uh, or family members that we would say, um, are far from God. And as I'm reading this and understanding the context, it just hit me again today that no one is out of reach from God. There is not one person that is out of reach. There is not one person that is um, unsavable by the power of God. There is not one person um, that you know of and that I know of that cannot come back or cannot return or cannot come into relationship with Jesus. And this is what we see in ha- this is what we see happening in Antioch, a city that is lost, a city that is completely far from God, filled with temple prostitution, yet we see them become an unbelievable beachhead for the gospel. And we see God do amazing things in Antioch. That's the first city in the first place where Christianity in this term Christian came from. The city had to name these people. Christians in Antioch didn't name themselves. Their city named them because of how distinct they were living among them. And the gospel spread throughout that city of ep- in epic proportion. So much is going on here in Acts chapter 11. May you and I today live in such a way where people have to call us something. They've got to name us something. As we live in a city that is far from God, may we shine bright. Uh, and, you know, As we live among people that, that are far from God, may we love them and serve them and see who they aren't really today, but who they could be through the power of the gospel. I'm, I'm really hoping that God meets with you and speaks to you in the way that he's been speaking to me today. I'm fired up, all right? Have a great, great Thursday, and we will see you guys tomorrow as we dive into Acts chapter 12. God bless.